great tradition. Also. So that is the actual democratic tradition. You find a democracy in India, you find only in the Buddhist and the Shramanic tradition. The non-Hindu, non-Vedic tradition, non Varnashrama Dharma traditions, which is the ancient tradition that goes up to the Shramanic tradition of Jains and Buddhists, and Ajivagas and Charvagas of India, which you find its origin in the ancient Indus Valley kind of tradition. From where we have uh, the name of uh, our, our land, our, our, our nation, that is in India. So it is from again from that name of the Ruva, we are having that ancient tradition of the Shramanic tradition. The Buddhist and Jain and Jivaga Shramanic tradition of India, which is Kaunda, which is a Kaunda hegemonic tradition in particular. If you use that Gramscian term, it's a Kaunda hegemonic tradition of the Vedic Varnashrama Brahmanical Hindu kind of system, the caste system, which has countered the caste system, which has countered the Varnashrama kind of which has challenged the uh, hegemony of the Brahminical Patriarchy in India. Brahminical Patriarchy, which is again a key coinage of America, that is extended and developed by all the feminists in India. All the mainstream feminists like Umar Chakravart, or uh, other Dalit-Bhavadil feminists like uh, Shamila Rage, or Anipama uh, Rao, or Rajeshwari Sutarajan, or Abhinaya Ramesh, and all of them, they have uh, adopted and recovered that, extended that uh, particular term, Brahminical Patriarchy, as a dominant uh, form of uh, cultural hegemony in India, as the real patriarchy in India. It's not a pure patriarchy, it is Brahminical or Hindu kind of patriarchy that you find in India, which has also infiltrated into all the other religions, even the minority religions are being polluted. That is why we have the Dalit Christian and uh, even the Pashmanda Muslim or the OBC and uh, untouchable Dalit Muslim issues are the, even in Sikhism, the latest religion in India. The most recent religion that was founded uh, in the 15th, 16th century with Gobind Singh and Guru Nanak and others, even in that you find the, uh, the evils of the caste system infiltrating and believing. So, uh, Ambedkar has identified through his writings, he has identified the democratic traditions of India in Buddhism, and he acknowledged it, and also he identified the anti democratic, the fascist, and the patriarchal, orthodox, hegemonic culture of India in the Brahminical patriarchy or in the uh, what we call the Ramashra, these uh, so called traditions of India. The traditions that are democratic and also the traditions that are anti-democratic. And democracy is nothing but the, uh, the, the, the rule for the social system of liberty, equality and fraternity. Democracy is nothing but uh, based on these modern democratic values of humanity. That is liberty, equality and fraternity. And whatever is against liberty, equality and fraternity that are anti So that is why the caste system and its theoretical religious sanctioning called the Varnas system or the Varnashrama Dharma or the Chaturvanya system, otherwise called the Chaturvanya system, it is the evil of the anti-democratic kind of tradition, orthodox tradition, conservative part of the hegemonic traditional culture in India. That is to be clearly understood. That is what we need to understand from this long tradition, by thousand years from the Indus Valley and from the Vedic age onwards to the contemporary present, that is the fundamental kind of uh, 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 basic principle or the basic ground, ground reality. We talked about reality and truth and uh, knowledge and all. So this is the fundamental reality of Indian society and history, Indian social formations and social history and cultural history in particular and political kind of history that we need So from there onwards we need to look into the kind of practices of political democracy all over the world. In Europe in modern times, uh, democracy flourished. Every Europe, European or America, uh, American country, they are claiming to be democratic and what is democracy? That is uh, what we need to ask. And champions uh, like uh, Abraham Lincoln and others who dedicated their lives they down their lives for democracy. Uh, Lincoln has defined it as a rule of the people. 
simply as in political terms, simple terms, it is nothing but the rule of the people and the rule of the people for the people and by the people defined. So it is nothing but a, a government through proxy. A government through of the people, they are actually governing themselves and but uh, for practical reasons, you have the parliamentary system, you have the electing system, you have the exercise of their franchise, the voting system, and you represent, you weigh your representatives and they are voting for us. That is it. So it is uh, the politics of representation. Basically, if you look at modern democracy, democracy is nothing but the politics of uh, political representation. Political agency and voice of the people are, uh, 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 are materialized through proxy of representation. It is the representative form of government. That is what democracy is uh, all about. So democracy is nothing but uh, uh, what we call the politics of representation. And there is no democracy possible without representation. And therefore, the just and adequate representation of the people is enough. We should uh, get uh, the all the what you call the one of the people, the adults. Those who are having franchise, we get uh, voting power. One person equal to one. Uh, vote and one, what you call that, quantity or one unit in democracy. It's all equal. Uh, it is not uh, irrespective of your wealth or your class position or gender or your, uh, what you call, family position or your religion or uh, language or region or whatever it is. You are equal. In political terms, we are equal. So that is another uh, kind of prophetic uh, warning that was given by a in the Constituent Assembly. In 1946 itself, uh, and again in 1949, uh, he addressed the Constituent Assembly and he said, we are entering into a, a, a kind of uh, paradox now. Because we have, uh, we have enshrined this political democracy in the Constitution. One person equal to one vote, one political right, that is the... So we have almost achieved political form of democracy. But unfortunately, social form of democracy is not yet achieved. It is, uh, uh, it is a, a distant dream we have to achieve. So this paradox, this contradiction is the uh, social form of democracy will come when this liberty, equality, fraternity. All people, they develop a kind of fraternity and a kind of equality, a kind of uh, maitri, larger maitri. That fraternal paradigm can only, uh, only by annihilating this caste, only by ending, eradicating as yes, uh, they are in these talent as recently prepared, only by eradicating this as a, a pandemic, this Varnashram Adharma, this Chadravodhya system or the caste system only by annihilating us. This was said by Ambedkar even before the constitution was drafted and uh, validated. Ambedkar wrote it in 1936 itself. Ambedkar has written and published it. It was very difficult to publish. Even Nehru, he was reluctant to publish that, the annihilation of the caste. This religion of caste, this religion of Arashrama is a threat to liberty, equality and fraternity, all the modern democratic values. And therefore it must be exploded with dynamite. That was the statement of Baba Sarabhai, the architect of the Indian constitution. And only recently when that uh, they are in their films, and also the youth of face minister of the FK Kamunada when he said that this is a, a pandemic. This caste system, this Varnashrama Dharma is a pandemic, it is to be eradicated like a malaria or plague or dengue and people are uh, uh, after him now. So uh, this is to be eradicated only by eradicating this caste system and the Varnashrama kind of ideology and uh, the art of discourse, the Vedic Vedantic discourse of India, the Brahminical uh, kind of anti-democratic Dominical patriarchal discourse only by terminating and annihilating it, you can achieve the social evil. So it's a distant dream of the what you call the founding fathers of our constitution, especially the chief architect of the BR Ambed. So uh, this is the contradiction that he was talking about. So uh, we need to address this reality, this issue of fighting against this caste system and annihilating the caste system. And only by delegitimizing the religious sanction of it, caste system survives. It is because it is part of the inevitable part of the Hindu religion. 
It is part of the Vedas, the Purusha Sutta is placed in the Rigvedic Purusha Sutta, the Tenth Mandar. It is uh, rendered as divine in the Gita, the holy book of the Hindus. Chaturvangya Maya Sushnam Guna Karma Vithaka Chan. So it is uh, the Lord Himself He speaks. And it is through the mouth of the Lord it is said that uh, uh, I, I, am, I am the Lord and I have created this Chaturvangya according to the Guna and this was uh, consistently refuted by many social reformers uh, of today. Uh, even Narada Guru Kerala, he refuted that. How can you fix the Varna when the Guna and Karma are uh, so uh, uh, flexible and changing? At every moment, the Guna and Karma of a uh, person is changing. So, how can you fix this one? That was the question that was asked by the Guru in Kerala. Uh, Periyor, when they, he was asked, uh, Tandai Periyor, he will have a the greatest leaders of the Indian movement, he even advocated a Dravda stand in Tamilaga in South India. And when he was asked about this Varnashrama Dharma and the Purusha Sutta story of uh, the Virat Purusha giving birth, uh, birth to the Brahman Kshatriya Vaishya and Shudra, the Chaturvarni, they have got a fourfold Varnashrama. He said, uh, then how are the other people, the other people born, the Shudras, uh, the Avarnas and women, there is no mention of women. How are they formed? Are there, there are no mention of uh, mentions of uh, minorities as well. He said uh, all these people, the Baudits of this country, they are born of their Tandai and Tarlai. They are born out of their mother and father, not from the mouth or the body organs of the Viratri. So, <coughs> this kind of absurd creation story, the Hindu myth of the uh, the generation of uh, Chaturvarnis from the various body organs of Vidyan uh, Purusha, Brahma Purusha, is an absurd story. <coughs> and uh, it is also criticized by all the what we call the social reformers, the champions of democracy in India. Without almost they have done. This is the same criticism you will find in 2600 years. In uh, so, uh, the point that I am trying to uh, present before you is that uh, this kind of a, a ethical and uh, a democratic perspective our new students and young students have, especially in the context of the valorization of this uh, Hindu kind of system in the NEP project, in the NEP National uh, <coughs> Education uh, Policy of 2020. This is given, this Sanskritic and uh, the Hindu kind of tradition is given for most importance. Sanskrit is being uh, valorized. And the language of modernity, that is English language, is being in the mind. And uh, uh, it's an attack on, it's a sly attack on modernity at last. Because we invite, as uh, Pune and uh, Guru in Kerala, they have proclaimed. It is the British who gave us that answer, maybe Putin himself. When the First World War was uh, uh, in the making, Guru has made a statement that it is the British. That means uh, he, through the British, he was a uh, metronomic kind of metaphor uh, to refer to the enlightenment modernity of Europe. He was accepting that as his teacher. The painter accepted Buddha as my master. Guru accepted Western Enlightenment tradition, the Enlightenment project of modernity of the West, European modernity as his masters. So uh, you cannot simply, uh, what you call, uh, do away with the English or modernity. It is, uh, we are uh, unfortunately through this Hindu discourse. Through this cast into barbarism and our national dharma kind of regime, we are uh, being uh, uh, what you call uh, we are we are pushed into the uh, what you call the middle ages, the barbaric middle ages. I mentioned about the counter revolutions that happened, not just in India, in Kerala also, in the 2019 Shabarimala riots, and also many other uh, sabotages to the constitution, the what you call the attack on the federalism. In the case of Kashmir and the Northeast, federalism was under, social justice was under for the casting to the salvation for DWS, and uh, gender justice was uh, done away with in that Shabarimala Shudra riots, 
and plenty of such backlashes have happened. So we need to address these issues. We need to study these issues very clearly. And only that kind of a cultural study. Only when the cultural studies in India actually examines and evaluates and uh, critically uh, studies or surveys these kind of contemporary cultural transformations. How society and culture are being transformed in India. Uh, we will be able to uh, address the challenges of our present and uh, future. That is one issue, important issue we need to remember. So, this idea of democratic uh, cultural politics of difference is actually an essay. Cultural politics of difference is an essay. It's a title of an essay by Cornel West. Cornel West is one of the leading intellectuals in the United States of America today. He is a leading African American intellectual. He is a professor and also uh, 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 he is a bishop. He is with the Black uh, Baptist Church and he is a reverend uh, bishop of the church. So Cornel West has written that uh, essay in the 1990s, early 1990s he has published an essay called cultural politics of difference in the context of West he has written. But he has examined all the other world, the all the third world parts, the Asian, African, Latin American, even Australian context he has touched upon the essay. And Cornel West has argued that uh, uh, for African American communities and the minorities in the US, the Hispanics are, uh, the Latinos are, the uh, Asian Americans are, uh, in addition to the African American. So, uh, they cannot simply accept uh, what we call the WASP culture. They call it as uh, an acronym WASP, W A S P. WASP means the white Anglo Saxon Protestant dominant culture of India. If grammatical patriarchy is the dominant culture in India, is the hegemonic culture in India, what you find in the United States of America is the WASP culture. According to this Afro American school, Formalist is an example. Others, even women, uh, L. Books and Tony Morrison and uh, Alice Walker and others, they have also elaborated. If they have created the form, even they have abandoned the mainstream uh, feminism and they created something called uh, womanism. Womanism is a feminism of color, according to them. And they have created their own, what they call, more inclusive, more democratic kind of. Uh, uh, for this tradition, which uh, they call itself as rules. So, African American intellectuals like uh, Henry Louis Gates Jr. and uh, the scholar West Elders, they argue that the most culture we cannot subscribe to. We as African Americans, we as minorities of the nation in the United States of America, we cannot subscribe to, we cannot submit to this dominant hegemonic culture here. The most culture, we are the jigs of that. And we have a difference. Our history is different. We are denied our historical shares during the days of slavery. As Tony Morrison has elaborated in playing in the dark, 400 years of silence of slavery that is behind this American canon and American culture. American society, even the Constitution, is created through the uh, life, blood, and sweat of the, the blacks and other people, not just the whites only. So they challenge it and they always claim. They claim their difference. That is what uh, Arthur West has uh, described as the cultural politics of difference. We have a cultural politics against the meta narrative of the nation, against the dominant worship of uh, uh, the American dream, of the American God, or the Americanness itself. It's an American. Tony Morrison has challenged playing in the market. Bell Hooks, she consistently calls it. Uh, uh, she passed away recently, books, and she called it uh, the what you call the uh, white supremacist capitalist hetero patriarch, the American patriarch of India, that Shabula uh, uh, Raghe or uh, uh, Anubhava, uh, uh, sorry, Shabula uh, Raghe or Anubhava Rao talk about. Elhooks has consistently uh, attacked and to take something called uh, the white supremacist capitalist patriarchy, the hetero patriarchy of the uh, United States. So they differ from that. They criticize it and they have always uh, registered their difference, their democratic voice of dissent. 
it's a space of design. Democracy is not the rule of the, uh, the, the majority. It is actually the, the space for debate and uh, dissent and diverse. That is what uh, we need to learn. That is why I mentioned a bit uh, that our people will have to learn it only through education. You can learn only through English. Only through modernity you will arrive at uh, a, a culture of democracy. That is true. That is why I meant to say our people will have to learn it through because whatever tradition was here in Buddhism, it was completely obliterated by Brahminism. Now we have to learn it from the West, from the European or the Euro-American Western model itself. That is why even the Guru acknowledged a man who didn't even study English language, uh, who uh, never uh, actually wrote uh, the alphabets of English. He claimed that uh, my masters are the British. So that kind of a, a learning tradition, a, a, a swap for education, a talent and a, a, a kind of what you call the space for English and modernity and education is the, uh, to come even near the tradition of democracy. That is what we need to do. So, uh, common West, we argue that uh, we criticize the West culture dominant hegemonic culture in the United States and we have a space of difference. We can descend, we have a space to descend and uh, differ and this difference is a democratic kind of uh, paradigm. It's a democratic kind of space, it's a democratic kind of agents that claim to be equal and be different. That is the claim to be equal on a humanitarian and the level of humanity we are all equal, that is true. One man equals one more. But at the same time, we also need to look at the social diversity, various social formations, social groups, and the representation of each social group. Blacks are not given to have just shares. From those, uh, uh, what you call you, the early abolitionist days, the days of uh, civil war and uh, anti abolitionist, uh, kind of abolitionist and anti abolitionist struggles in the US, they are not given to have just from that uh, so general truth onwards, well who's they have that uh, same story, ain't I a woman. They claim the humanity, they claim that we are humans and we are women. Uh, even so general truth, she bared her chest to reveal that she is a woman. She is a woman like any other white woman or a dark woman or a fair woman. So that kind of a struggle, a struggle for difference, and a struggle to assert their voice and their agency and just shares in democracy, just representation. That is the idea in formal West as well. So everywhere, not just in India, in South Asia, in Australia, in Africa, in Latin America, but everywhere, even in the developed world, people, the minorities, those who are denied their right to power, their just and due shares in power and governance. They are asking for it, they are fighting. So this is the real democratic struggle that we need to invite and we need to understand in our uh, academic considerations. That is why in cultural studies you have the saying that cultural studies is cultural politics itself. Cultural studies is not a neutral kind of uh, what you call the insensitive kind of a discourse. It is very much passionate, it is powerful. It is engaging, life engaging. That is a new notion of pedagogy. Uh, Bell Hooks has uh, elaborated. Earlier, we were subscribing to the Latin American model uh, that uh, Bolo Freire and others, uh, the critical pedagogy paradigm, even today, uh, that is the, the kind of uh, foundation of our objective based, even an outcome based kind of education. Now we are into the outcome based thing and all the uh, UG programs and the NEP projects and all. Uh, but uh, we have, uh, they, in the West, they have already changed to the life-based kind of education. That is called life-engaged education. That is what we engage the pedagogy of values. Values is behind the concept of engaged pedagogy. If uh, critical pedagogy is by Paulo Freire, the Latin American uh, kind of uh, educationist, values, the Afro-American black Buddhist group, in the United States, he has created through various uh, writings on education, teaching to transfers, education as the practice of freedom through various writings. Wellhooks has created something called uh, uh, engaged, which is nothing but life engaged, human lives matter, black lives matter. 
Dalit lives matter, minority lives matter, Christian lives matter in the Northeast. In uh, Odisha, in many other parts of uh, India today. So we need to address the real issues and the ground realities of this country as well. And we need to rearrange our pedagogy and our education kind of endeavors, our studies and research, and all the epistemological kind of activities, all the knowledge based activities in a very socially and politically aware and more democratic, more inclusive more uh, what call compassionate kind of uh, an egalitarian paradigm we need to develop. And uh, my only humble uh, submission is that uh, that kind of a new engaged uh, pedagogy and new engaged kind of life engaged humanities we need to create as a response to the attack on modernity in the national education policy 2020 framework that is now being alarmingly in Kerala, like the EWS, Kerala it was uh, implemented first, uh, the first attack on the uh, social justice, uh, social democracy paradigm of the constitution, it was uh, done from Kerala. Likewise, uh, again in Kerala, NEP is being, uh, what do you call it, in an over-enthusiastic way. They are implementing it um, on a laving uh, kind of phase and uh, uh, a kind of reverence for it. So it is to be critiqued and checked. We need to counter this uh, anti-democratic, anti-modern agenda of paganism in India through ethical and democratic tradition and uh, practicing something called uh, a new cultural studies, which is nothing but a new cultural politics of difference and democracy. That is my uh, request to all the students and researchers here. I thank uh, the department for this uh, opportunity. And unfortunately, because of various reasons, I don't know why, because of that uh, audio problem and later my throat problem, uh, somehow I was uh, uh, checked and limited uh, much. But I uh, thank uh, HOD and uh, the Sona and other uh, uh, respected teachers of the department and other students for your patient listening and this opportunity. Now, this is only a kind of what we call the, uh, the uh, a kind of uh, uh, preliminary kind of uh, agenda that I have set here. Uh, I'm eager to listen to you and your responses and your kind of observations uh, and ideas from this challenging, crucial situation that we are in today. Thank you. Sir. Sir, it's not a positive statement from your insights. Um, I would like to address the emerging new nationalism in India as the new Indian pioneer nationalism, which emerged as the fear of the egalitarian out of the Lhasa Hindu culture, so that it's not a nationalistic view, but it's a an egalitarian nationalism re-insisted by the public. By the implementation of new education policy, they try to establish it in an indirect way, yet invisible to the people as the new renaissance in education. It's, um, it's a bureaucratic develop education system which also addresses the demands of the Hindu nationalism. As of the fact, as a democratic nation, the people of India were neighbor or not even able to understand and oppose the defects of this national education policy as well. And I like to address it as a cultural problem because the innate culture of mainly the central India, the state like Maharashtra, Rajasthan, and Gujarat, they are addressing Hinduism as their core belief and they are ready to accept its difficulties as well, even the subordinate things. So, we need to address them because they are the most populated area 
bill of the parliament also represented. So the education or the empowerment of the central India is the key to success to the modernity while sticking on to the Hinduism and not addressing ourselves to the Western nation's culture. As a nation, most Hindus fear when we be addressed as Westerns or the Western culture we follow in Indians. That is a fear of a very hardcore Hindu and we knowingly or unknowingly accept the Dalit Bharatiya nationalism to avoid this fear. So I begin to undermine the real cases happening all over the rest of India, especially where the English language and capitalism provide. Even in Kerala, there is an underlying movement which always rejected Catholic development. The Catholic populated area is more developed than the Hindu populated area. Considering the capital, capital, state capital itself, Trivandrum is least developed or least modernized because they are still continuing the temple traditions, if I call in my view. So the modernity is not least there as well. They are truly stricken towards the government, government of his lifestyle and they are not modernizing. Even this new uh, Spencer is closely there. That empowerment can be only happen by we, the most elite educated people, uh, of course, as USA, is able to go down or to the grassroots level work in Central India can only help to eradicate this mass cross interlinking cultural demolition in India. We are being an image or provided population, especially you and me, can't change the people who are living for their life in the rural areas and admiring somehow someone speaking so loud as their leaders. It's not your fault. At least the fault of the privileged community like me and you. We need to be compassionate and we need to teach this young population how to live and how to respect ourselves. That itself can eradicate the marginalized communities in Hinduism. If Consolidation of the caste consciousness becomes the caste system. It is also in India it is having the religious sanction because if you take away the caste and caste system from Hinduism, there is nothing that remains. And it's actually the caste religion which is called Hinduism. So the notion of America uh, was that uh, in order to annihilate caste, you need to eradicate its uh, sanctioning religion. So only by eradicating the religion of caste, the caste system can be abolished. That was the idea of Ambedkar. Uh, it varies in, in Kerala Renaissance, in Naranaguru, the idea of Jadi Lakshanam and Jadi Nirnayam, these were the two key points written by the Guru on the caste issue. And well, he denies caste and he talks about the oneness of it. But at the same time, we need to deny the what is, hierarchical notion of the caste and at the same time you also need to try to eradicate these are the two aspects uh, or the two dimensions or the two approaches uh, uh, provided by various social reformers and uh, thinkers on the caste system. So anyway it is to be addressed, that is the fundamental thing. You cannot deny, you can no longer deny it its existence, its evil, its inequality, 
its uh, violence and all, you need to address it and somehow try to eradicate it. And there are plenty of means and ways to uh, eradicate this thing that we will have to find out through experimentation. And uh, Ambedkar and others, they advocated the idea of uh, breaking the caste endogamy. Caste is nothing but caste endogamy. So, a liberation of uh, women and their uh, self-determination of their choice and sexuality. That is one aspect. Breaking endogamy or creating exogamy, that kind of mix-up of blood, mix-up of uh, various social groups through marital alliances and other human kind of bondages, that is one thing. And plenty of other measures are making it in India, as in the constitution of India, it is made anti-legal. It is a punishable effect, uh, offense, practicing of the caste system. It's a constitutional kind of crime. And uh, plenty of such legal and also greater what we call uh, value transformations are also to be done. That is why Ambedkar said we are in entering into a paradoxical moment here. We have political equality, political democracy, but social democracy is yet to be achieved. It is the larger game of fraternity. Only through developing Maitri, you can enter into that. So that will take time. Education. So educate, agitate and organize. That was the victim of a uh, That was given to the youth and the youngsters in particular. Educate, agitate and organize. That was the same message of the Guru that uh, educate so that you are liberated, organize so that you are empowered. The same triple jumps of the Buddha, Buddham, uh, Dhammam and Sangham. These are the same kind of message. So plenty of uh, ways we need to think of, uh, of annihilating and eradicating caste. Uh, anyway, we need to address it in our critical studies. Cultural studies in India must focus on these intersectional issues, not just on class or high culture, the idea of uh, Arnoldian high cultures that was rejected by uh, Raymond Williams and others. They were Levisites in earlier traditions. Williams himself was a student of F.R. Levis. And he was into that kind of high cultural tradition. He was trained by Nevis in that tradition. But in later he rejected it all. And he tried to address the working class culture. The working class black culture of Britain. As to what and others elaborated on that. So we need to address the intersectional issues. Not just the old orthodox Marxist obsession with class. We need to address gender and caste, gender and race and other sexuality issues also, intersectional issues are to be addressed in India. The unaddressed issue is caste, what happened to the left in Kerala and West Bengal and Northeast in particular. Northeast is having all these problems now. Because of the latter kind of this uh, subscribing to the Hindutva kind of ideology, because what happened during the left days in Bengal, the party has vanished. Because the party was dominated by the Brahminical forces, as in the case of Kerala. And Brahminical patriarchy has uh, directly uh, allowed the entrance of the caste into forces into power. So, the issue of caste is fundamental. It is to be addressed by pedagogy in education, critical studies. That is the importance of cultural studies in India. Cultural studies in India must be anti caste studies, must be the of course, you, need, you cannot separate gender hierarchy from caste hierarchy in India because it is a double uh, labor in the It's a double effect in the sword. It's a hierarchy of caste and also it's a hierarchy of gender. That is the problem of grammatical thinking. So, the intersectional ideas uh, or issues of gender and caste and class and sexuality and language and religion, all these things are to be addressed in tandem uh, in a simultaneous way. So that is the only way in humanities and uh, cultural studies and critical studies, I think. So an intersectional uh, kind of perspective, an interdisciplinary kind of perspective is to be adopted in academics uh, while addressing the caste issue. So it's an ongoing debate. We have no final words. New and new populations and experimentations and theorizations are uh, to be expected. Thank you.